Hi, welcome back to the Procreate Basic series. Today is episode 8 where we will be learning all about actions continuing from yesterday. So today is actions part 2. In today's tutorial, you'll be learning all about animation assist, canvas information, drawing guides and reference companion. So before we get started, remember to like, comment and subscribe. We will begin by picking up from yesterday's tutorial and going into animation assist now. For our next tab, I'm going to talk about the animation assist. So this is actually an animation I made in Procreate and if I tap on the layers, you can see all the crazy layers all here already. But nothing is playing, there's no animation playing. So to get it to work, I have to tap on the actions tab and tap on animation assist. So once I tap on that, I can see a play bar right here already. And if I just scroll through them, I can see my animation right here. And if I tap on settings, there's actually a ping pong loop one shot. If it's a loop, it will just keep looping the animation. Once it's done, it will just play back from the beginning again. And if I tap on ping pong, it will play from the beginning to the end and then end to the beginning like a ping pong. And if it's a one shot, if I play it, it will just stop at the end. So right now it's set to 9 frames per second. Let me show you how it looks like with a lower frame rate. So everything will be slower because it's actually just 3 frames per second right now. And if I set it to very high, like 19, it will be really fast and very smooth. But that would mean that I have to animate a lot of frames. So I pull it at like a 9 so that I don't have to animate so many frames and it still looks quite decent. And then here I have this onion skin frames. I'm just going to pick a frame here and I'm going to pick onion skin frames and slide it to 3. Okay. So this is actually showing me the previous frame and the frame after that. So this is helpful when you're sketching out the animation because you can see the frame before and the frame after and it's very very useful you can also control the opacity right here like how transparent you want it to be but you can see here that i can't really tell what's going on right because everything is blue and yellow and it's all merging together so to do that i can actually blend the primary frame and color the secondary frame so if i tap on color secondary frame you can see that my current frame is in the original color but the frame before that is actually in green so that I can tell like, oh, this is my current layer and the green one is the secondary layers. Another assistant tool is the blend primary frame. So sometimes it might not be very clear what I'm looking at. And if I just want to check that, oh, I'm actually working on this frame right now, I can tap on blend primary frame and I can see, oh, this is where I'm currently at, the one that's showing up the most. So I can easily just check it to check what am I doing right now. So that's all there is to animation assist. And now let's go to the next one which is drawing guide. If I tap on drawing guide, I actually have a grid but you can have multiple things. So if you tap on edit drawing guide, you can have a 2D grid isometric which is like in hexagon and you can also have a perspective guide which you can't see anything now because you need to set it up for it to work and this is the symmetry guide where you can draw things simultaneously like a mandala or in a mirrored format so i'll cover this in the grid tutorial within this basic series but for now let's put it to 2d grid and to adjust it you can adjust the opacity here you can change the color with the color bar on top so let's say i'm sliding here and the color's changing you can make it take so that you can see it and then I can make the grid size bigger I can also move it by dragging it around so this is really good if you want the composition to be really precise and then for reference if you turn it on you can have a reference of a thumbnail where you can load your image so when you are in the reference tab you can see that I can move it around like this and I can also drag the bottom to resize it if I tap on canvas, it's actually going to show me what's happening on my canvas. So for example, if you're working really, really zoomed in, you can still see a snapshot of what's happening in your canvas here. Also, you can have this zoom in and this zoomed out, whichever works. The good part about this companion bar is that you can actually tap and hold your finger to pick colors from it and just to reference the colors that you want to paint onto your painting itself. So of course you can also have an image, if you just tap on image, you can tap on import to import a new image and this will show you a new image. So this image in comparison to the canvas just now, you can actually rotate it 
just now you can't using the canvas function but right now you can actually rotate it and zoom in and out you can also tap and pick colors as well to get the options to show up again you just tap once here and then you can see it's here already you can also clear it to clear the image out of the reference and of course you can have your last option i think this works more with ipad that has the 3d scanning thingy if you are actually holding this upright you can see your face and then you can refer to yourself while you paint yourself so it's like a self-portrait one way to close the reference bar is by tapping the X button right here or you can also tap the actions bar again make sure in the canvas tap and then tap on reference to turn it off so these are two ways to close the reference tab so there you go and then here we have canvas information so if you tap here we can see a couple of informations here like about the artwork you can put in your name and you can sign here you can see when you create the project and when did you modify it for the dimensions this is actually all fixed you can't change anything here it's basically just an information tab the most important thing that you want to look at is the layers so right here i know i have 57 layers available and i've already used 12 so i only have 45 left so if you're working really big you might not have so many left and you will keep coming back to the canvas info tab and checking on how many layers you have left so other than the layers, one of the more important tabs is the color profile and right here you can see that my current color profile is sRGB so sRGB is more suitable for web display and digital display so right now you, I can actually pick other color profiles and if I pick P3 P3 is only available for newer iPads that has this color profile available so if I tap on done, it's going to change the color profile so the video settings will determine your time-lapse video so right here you can see it's set to low and the length is going to be this long the resolution is going to be 1080p the file size how big and the codec format is going to be h264 so to change your video quality you actually have to set them when you're creating a canvas so you just slide left when you're creating and then you will pop up this setting screen and then you have to tap on time lapse setting then after that you will be able to see this setting page where you can set everything from the get-go this was already covered in my canvas tutorial in the same series so if you're interested you can get back there but for now let's get back to our canvas information and under statistics these are just for geeks seriously like total strokes made track time and total file size okay guys thank you so much for watching tomorrow is the last part of the actions tag tutorial in this basic series so make sure you catch tomorrow's tutorial and i'll see you tomorrow don't forget to comment like and subscribe bye